How's everything going? Everything going is going well. Yeah, can't complain. Awesome, awesome. Well, I gave you a little intro into some of the things we're going to be speaking about today. Okay. There's so obviously you have our cosmic origin, the original series on Unified TV. Mm -hmm. Episode one came out last week. Episode two is coming out, I believe, on Saturday, in just a couple of days from now. And I, of course, had a little sneak peek at episode two. And you were speaking a lot about the multiverse and understanding the multiverse and how science is going into this and how science is actually speaking about a different race called Homo Neur... I forgot the name. What Neo was that word? Neoticus. Okay. Where, can, can, you, can you like give us an understanding? I found it to be very, very interesting in, in just that big picture of the multiverse in general and how you understand it now, how you're teaching it. So you start wherever you want, but I just think it's an amazing topic. Okay, so according to the new, you know, avenue of science called quantum physics, particularly through the uh, field of uh, unified field, super string theory, M theory, uh, gravity theory, there, and of course, supersymmetry, which are all, you know, different aspects of quantum physics. Mm -hmm. uh, Scientists in the last 10 years have discovered that uh, not only are we part of one universe, but that uh, we are actually part of a multiverse, that there's other universes. And the way they describe it is as, as bubbles, like there's different bubbles. Each universe is like a bubble. And they're all coexisting at the same time, and they're all moving away from each other. And uh, one of the ways that they were able to derive in understanding that concept that we are part of a multiverse is the fact that they discovered that at the quantum level of reality, or what they called um, through a phenomenon known as quantum fluctuations, that the uh, events that we call the Big Bang, that pretty much initiated the beginning of our, our universe, is an event that is a continuous process. So in other words, creation mm -hmm. is infinite. Creation is not something that just took place in the past. It's not, you know what I mean? It's, it's something that is actually ongoing. And then the second thing that they did is uh, through a phenomenon known as uh, cosmic inflation, they realized that not only are the universes expanding away from each other, but that they also um, are born from uh, somewhat of a motherverse. So the term that they used to discuss that is meta, and that has nothing to do with Zuckerberg's <laughs> metaverse, virtual reality. You know, that's something different. Um, so they said that uh, this realm that they call the motherverse is a realm that is eternal without beginning or end um, it is something that has always existed and th and that is the reason why all these universes are being born because of that eternal yeah and so that's how i was able to discover that uh, we are part of multiverse i mean i knew this 10 years ago yeah. when you know they were barely kind of exploring the concept and of course conventional scientists still don't want to accept it they still want to they still want uh, to make everyone believe that we are part of just one universe, one realm, and one world. So that is currently being overthrown as I speak because through their um, laser infometry uh, satellite antenna, a, a code named LISA, they are actually um, bringing forth evidence that there are other universes. So when, when this evidence comes to light to the general public, you realize the entire conventional physics is going to it's going to re reorganize. It's going to have to like rearrange itself based on the new discoveries. And a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, discovering that we are part of 11 dimensions, uh, but that is just based on the understanding of piercing into the galactic spheres and um, only perceiving what is known as the 4%. And of course, okay. the 6%, they call it dark matter and dark energy. And so this is where my work comes in in explaining that uh, there are colonies, that there are life forms in the so-called dark matter and dark energy. It's just reality vibrating at higher frequencies beyond the perceptible or what their scientific instruments could measure. A hundred percent. They used to call that empty space, by the way, and we found out that it's not so empty. It's actually okay. full of infinity, if anything. And, you know, even with when people speak about 10 dimensions, 11 dimensions, 12 dimensions, because of our language, I think that that sounds limited in a way, but each dimension in and of itself, minus the, the, you know, parameters and limitations of language, to my knowledge, is limitless in and of itself. Almost like if I took this, this pen right here, 
this pen has a beginning and an end that we perceive. But if I told you, cut this pen in half to a point where the pen will no longer exist, you can't do that. There will always be something to continue cutting in half and half and half and half. And in that way, this pen is actually infinite, even though we perceive it as having a beginning and an end. So there's a question that I want to ask you with a preface before regarding the multiverse as well, because one of the biggest things I speak about, I like to call it the terminology crisis. I think we're all saying the same thing in a different way. And that's the limitation of what causes us to feel like we're divided and separated, because it sounds like we're saying two completely different things. And a perfect example of that is, okay, let's take the Big Bang and let's take creation of this world, this world as we know it today. If you go according to Kabbalah, Kabbalah is not a Jewish thing. It's the mystical side of what many refer to as Judaism, but it's beyond that. It's every, every religion has like a mystical side. In Islam, they have Sufism. In, in Judaism, they have the Kabbalah, which is much bigger than any religion in and of itself. So in the Kabbalah, it actually speaks about, and I'm no expert, by the way, this is just from a little bit that I read, a little research that I've done, and some rabbit holes that I've gone through because it interests me. And the deeper I went down, the more I started learning about what they call the light, the vessel, and the shattering of the vessel. Meaning before we had a physical, tangible world in this world that we experience, there was a point where because of the law of conservation, which science says energy cannot be created or destroyed, like you said, it's a continuous process. There was never an actual beginning and there will never actually be an end, but there are like almost creations of new world from the energy that was always here because it's infinite. And what Kabbalah calls the shattering of the vessel is pretty much when spiritual, the spirit world penetrated into the material world. So spirit became matter. And in that way, the shattering of the vessel was this form of like an explosion of light that never ends. Now within the continuous creation of creation, that is a point that we can say, okay, this happened, right? But before that time didn't exist, space didn't exist. There was none of that in the world that we're living in today, like relative to what was happening before. There was no before or after, it didn't even exist. So in that way, when scientists say the Big Bang and Kabbalists, people that study Kabbalah, say the shattering of the vessel, they're saying the same exact thing in completely different words. So that's the terminology crisis. They start like going against each other and say, oh no, you're a heretic and you're this and you're that and you're that. The only difference that I'm seeing it, between the two is the Big Bang is something that people call random and the shattering of the vessel is still an explosion, an expansion of light eternally and infinitely, but not in a random way, in a very organized way, because according to that, there is only like divine intelligence that guides everything. So my question for you with that preface is, on one level, I agree with everything you're saying regarding the multiverse. There's many, many, many different worlds within this ongoing process of creation. But would you say that within, like if we dive deeper, 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 deeper down, there's something that connects all the, in, there is no all because it's, it's forever, but the infinity of multiverses and that thing is what we can call like the source that is one in that way, yet we still experience it broken up and fragmented because we experience different worlds. What, what, what would your stance be on that? Yeah, uh, well, the, in esoteric literature is uh, known as the manifest, you know, it's when the unmanifest is considered the world or, or the existence of eternity, right? Okay. Spirit. The manifest is when spirit precipitates into the material realms. And that's another way of explaining it. So due to the fact that everything is energy, and even in the realms of the manifest, it's energy vibrating at different frequencies. And that's what uh, divides the different dimensional spheres. See, it's all one, one light spectrum that is just vibrating on different frequencies. So that's what separates the dimensions. But uh, to answer your question, um, the, what unifies all the different multiverses, despite the infinite number of worlds that exist, it is an underlying field that is connected to that, uh, the pre-material realm, to, to, to the concept of eternity, that motherverse. See, the motherverse has never okay. had a beginning. So that's where it all you, starts. You're calling it the motherverse, what I'm trying to explain. 
Yeah, so the, the dark matter and the dark energy, which occupies the higher spheres be, be beyond the 11th dimensional galactic spheres that we perceive, um, is, ma is uh, energy that is still all around us. See, most people think that we have to go up to reach the, you know, the higher spheres of reality into the motherverse. And that is not the case. We are actually in the midst. Dark matter and dark energy is all around us. It's just reality vibrating at different frequencies. And also, the dimensions are not, it's not a location. It's not somewhere out there. The dimensions, they're all coexisting at the same time in the same space. And this is what most scientists are like, you know, this is what mind boggles them. They don't understand how there could be all these dimensions that are occupying the same space at the same time and how we could, you know, we're like in the middle of it all. But yeah, uh, yeah so there is an underlying field that uh, binds and uh, permeates all of the universes. And that is the spirit of the motherverse. The motherverse is infinite. And I and understand. Okay. Yeah, that, I like having these conversations because you break down the terminology and then we're like, okay, here's the, the synchronicity. Here's the connection. I love this topic. I think this topic has to be spoken about. I mean, everywhere. And one thing you said earlier, which I loved, and I completely agree with it, is the fact that science can only measure with the tools that it's created. So by, by proxy, we're limited by the level of awareness that created the tools that we have. Just because we can measure something doesn't mean everything else isn't there. It just means that our tools can't necessarily measure it. So the next question for you is, how do you think we get to the point where we're no longer limited by the tools that we have right now that stop us from seeing more because our tools are mainly physically oriented tools today. Well, what um, connects us to the other dimensions, uh, Jason, believe it or not, is our dormant DNA. The okay. more we tap and activate our dormant DNA, the more we're gonna access other realms and dimensions. Uh, right now, we're only using 4%. Listen, this is a beautiful mathematical cor correlation. The only reason we're only piercing into 4% of the cosmos, right, and the other 96% is so-called missing, is because by virtue of that, we're only using 4% of our full genetic material. The moment we begin to go beyond the 4%, we're gonna have access to more of the light uh, energy spectrum. In other words, we're gonna have access to higher dimensions. So, so cool. dormant DNA is what connects us. So if we were to use 100% of our full genetic material, we would have access to all the dimensions. We would have access to infinity. You know what I mean? But we have one increments because that's how powerful we are. So you spoke about something in the upcoming episode of Our Cosmic Origin. I want to show a trailer right now that nobody's seen before, it, including you. I told you we have an amazing trailer to share, and I can't wait to share it with you. I want to show it over here first because you speak about how we're entering this, this new time of a new really like type of human where supernatural abilities are going to be extremely natural and second nature to all of us. So everybody, I'm going to show you guys a trailer right now on episode two that's coming out on Saturday. Episode one is already out on Unified TV. And if you want to support Ishmael and the work that he's doing, make sure to go to unified.tv forward slash Ishmael. And over there is where you'll be able to sign up and support Ishmael for the work that he's doing as well. Check out this trailer. Scientists have discovered that not only are we part of one universe, that, but that we're part of a multi-universe system, that there are other universes out there that exist parallel to the evolution of our own universe. There's about 10 new universes that are being born each day. What distinguishes the five advanced categories of civilizations is their ability to harness and use power and energy. Let me explain that we are actually multidimensional beings. There are aspects of ourselves that exist in the five harmonic universes. At the stellar level of reality, we are mutating. And there is, a, there is scientific proof for that. In fact, the scientists for the last 20 years have been talking about the emergence of the next stage of human evolution to the point where they even give it terminology. They call it the rise of Homo neoticus. We are going to witness the rise of humans with supernatural powers. For the first time in cosmic history, our entire universe is ascending due to the events that are now unfolding on this earth. It's exciting. <laughs> so I'm super excited about that one because of what's actually spoken about there. I've never heard of the, I keep getting the word wrong, the homo, what was the, the second word? Uh, homo neoticus. Homo ne neoticus? 
Neoticus. It's spelled N E T I C as in cat U S Neoticus. Neoticus. Where can we read more about this? Okay, so uh, I yeah. say it's it's very hard um, to really dig in this information. I actually, when I first came, uh, when when I first discovered that terminology, it was actually about ten years ago. Okay, uh, about how scientists are now predicting the rise of the next stage of human evolution based on these sudden jumps in human uh, in human genetics or these sudden uh, mutations rather that have taken place over and over in, in prior cycles. And so based on this genetic mutation or, or this sudden leap in evolution is what they use the word to describe the next stage of human evolution. They said that any day now, and this was 10 years ago, they said within the next decade, we should be witnessing the rise of the next stage of human evolution. And they called it Homo neoticus. And then they said the difference between the Homo neoticus and the Homo sapiens sapiens is that Homo neoticus are going to have abilities that are considered godlike superpowers. You know, they're going to be able to do what we would now consider the impossible. And I strongly believe, Jason, that all these Marvel movies, all these DC movies are actually preparing humanity for what's coming. It's amazing. It's amazing. Do you think that's done super intentionally or do you think that that's a piece of like directors and producers on a level of the soul that they just feel and they're putting out there in that way or both? I believe it's a little bit of both, but I also believe that um, the original writers of Marvel had were actually um, part of secret ultra meetings that took place in the 1950s, and they had access to private information, and they were told not to reveal the information, but what they did is they went ahead and they decided to, to do it in a non-direct, nonchalant way by writing Marvel comics. In other words, what they were doing is they were planting the seeds. I can tell you one thing for sure. I don't know if I've said this publicly before. I can't say which show it is, but there is, I'm not sure if it's Marvel, but everybody would know the show. There are certain individuals, now when it goes back to TLS and that organization, that their job is to do things like that, where they're doing it intentionally. They're mm -hmm. planting certain things about the silver cord. They're planting certain things about out-of-body experiences. They're planting certain subliminal messages about you know different spiritual actions that we can all interact and be a part of and actually activate within ourselves through specifically what i'm talking about there's a tv show i was actually told when it came out they're like watch uh see i was like season one episode eight go watch this show and you'll understand what's going on it was very funny because it was all about everything does, having to do with the illusion of time but tapping it, into our inner power called shield say it again does it happen to be called S.H.I.E.L.D.? It's not, but I can't say the name because then you'd know who the producer is and the producer is a part of the organization. So that's, oh. that's where the, the anonymity goes and where that's how they work. It's not, it's not like nobody cares for you to know their identity and who they are and what they're doing behind the scenes. You know, there's, there's e zero ego involved over there. That's why even like the disclosure series, you don't know who it is and it really doesn't matter. And we got to ask ourselves, what does that person have to gain? Not fame, not fortune. What does that person have to gain? If anything, it's, it's an inconvenience for them because now they have to sit down and, you know, I'm asking them questions and doing all these things. So I think when there is no identity attached to a job, that's the most selfless type of work there is because ego cannot get involved because it's not about you. It's not about attaching to a specific identity. And in my opinion, I think it's just, it's, it's noble in a whole different way, you know? Makes sense. I agree. Yeah. 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 Well... I have a call in a few minutes, so I'm going to have to go. <laughs> but for the, past, for the next five minutes, there are a few questions that are coming in. Um, I'm going to ask you them and go ahead and answer however you'd like. Okay. Question number one, what are your thoughts on integrating our multidimensional selves into this time-space reality? What do you think about that? Um, that's a very important question. Uh, and I think that... Um... I did put out a video about a week ago how there's like different versions of ourselves that are ex coexisting simultaneously in other dimensions and different parallel worlds and universes. And the best way to integrate all of that and begin to become aware of yourself in other dimensions and parallel realities is by, you know, going within, integrating by meditation and asking your higher self to bring forth the rest of your consciousness or to at least integrate all of your consciousness. Because see, our consciousness right now is 
fragmented into all these different realities. And so um, there's only like 1% of our consciousness needed in order to animate your avatar. The other 99% of your consciousness is, is operating different avatars all at the same time. So right. by invoking that, by, by literally using your willpower to invoke all your consciousness to collapse, what you're doing is you're, you're collapsing all the dimensional versions of yourself into a singularity. And if you manage to do so, you're going to have, you, I mean, you're going to be super powerful because you're going to have access to infinite intelligence. So do you think the ultimate goal is really to do what you just said, merge those timelines into one so you're tapped into, like you said, infinite intelligence, infinite possibilities? Exactly. Because in different, in different um, parallel realities, you have these powers. You, you are like a god, a goddess. You have, you're like a wizard, you know? Um, it, it's just a matter of invoking that and, and, and willfully, you know, collapsing it, like calling upon every, every part of your being and saying, I want to integrate all of my bodies into the here and the now, all of my, my entire consciousness, I want to collapse it into one singularity. And if you begin to do that, I mean, <laughs> you're going to be one of the first ones to become homo neoticus, I guarantee you. Ah, I understand. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's that, I like that connection also to, to paint a picture of what that actually looks like. Obviously, the most important question when it comes to that is, I know you speak about meditation a lot. Are there any and this isn't a basic thing to do, but are there any simple steps or basic steps that can be taken at least to start to get to that point of homo neoticus, to get to that point of merging these timelines to access that infinite potential? What would you say are, let's say the three most important things that we can actually do and apply right here, right now? First, you have to become aware of yourself as a multi-dimensional being, okay? okay? More than just this crude third dimensional body. You are infinite intelligence expressing itself currently in human form and then the second thing you have to do is after you recognize that you have to do daily rituals and by by what i mean by doing daily rituals is you have to uh, spend time in nature mother nature is the key to accessing our powers because we are made out of the same elements and just like the just like ourselves the earth is also multi-dimensional yes so you begin to spend time with nature you begin to uh, synchronize with the elements you begin to fuse your consciousness with Mother Earth and the entire organic creation. And then the third thing you do, the third, thing, uh, or, or the third step that you do, is you use your willpower to invoke your entire consciousness and all aspects of yourselves that are coexisting simultaneously to collapse into a singularity. And you, and you will it by choice. You know? And the more, you do that, the more you do that, the more you're going to see some sort of an integration and the more you're going to be able to access higher levels of consciousness beyond your human self. Beautiful. I encourage everybody to listen to this, maybe, what was it, 20, 30 minutes of some fun and deep conversation. L listen to this multiple times. You may see things differently, just like when you watch a movie multiple times, it's the same exact idea. And as always, Ishmael, it's an honor to work with you. It's a pleasure to work with you. I'm enjoying just this you know, partnership and collaboration that we're coming to do together. And, you know, making knowledge and information more accessible for all and open to the world. So thank you. And thank you for the original series and your energy that you bring to the Unified TV platform. And again, most importantly, you guys, Ishmael works very hard and does this 24 seven. If you guys do want to support him, check out his series at unified.tv forward slash Ishmael. What we're doing here and what the platform really stands for is almost like what we're talking about right now merging and bringing all of us under this one roof and one umbrella where everything is accessible right then and there instead of fragmenting a whole bunch of different communities bringing these communities together a reflection of exactly what we've been talking about coincidentally not so much in this live with merging those timelines to access that highest potential so make sure to check out unified.tv forward slash ishmael our cosmic origin four-part series episode one already came out and episode two is being released this Saturday on October 22nd, I believe is the date. So again, thank you, Ishmael. You're awesome. And I look forward to doing more of these together. You're welcome, Jason. Thank you again. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.